Things that trigger LEGO fans. Let's start with the worst things you can ever encounter on a LEGO set. These things on the box. If you are a LEGO fan, you know how hard it is to remove these things to actually open the box. Now, to open this, you have to use your hands. But how? Yeah, I don't know how to open this. Apparently, you have to make a hole with your thumbs like an explosion. <laughs> But I think no one, even Scrooge McDuck, has been able to open this box without damage. Fans call this thumb fat. Now it's a hard word to say. Thumb tabs. I tried everything, not actually everything, and still the box becomes, well, let's say not the best looking one. What people recommend is opening the other side and I am sure there is somebody watching this video right now that knows how to do this and is already writing a comment and thank you for that. I don't know how LEGO wants me to open this, but what I've heard the fans do use like a, those things you use to make your hair dry. Now, let's move to another big issue, these pieces. Now, at first, this might seem like uh, something easy to remove. No, you don't know how to do this. It's like that Thanos meme. If you ever had this connection, it's like impossible to remove. This is a 2x2 brick connected to another one. It is the cause of many broken nails. I thought in this video here, you need two different brick separators, the old and the new one. That's how I said it to do in this video, which I recommend you watch. You can't use two of the same brick separators since they have no clearance to produce enough force to separate the pieces, but many times it's still hard and leaves some parts. Of course, even the brick separator gets a little chipped off and uh, over time this fatigue can cause damage. Another annoying thing is that most LEGO fans get triggered by stickers. Stickers are like the final boss in an old game, you can't beat him. Even 20 years later and when you have a YouTube tutorial to help you, it's like impossible. The same it is with stickers, but I'm not gonna give up that easily. So stickers are like the Achilles heel of LEGO sets because you get an awesome set, but then you have to put stickers and that kind of ruins the vibe, you know. When you open a LEGO set and see them, you go like, Stickers. Why did it have to be stickers? The main problem AFOs, adult fans of LEGO, have with stickers is that some are impossible to apply correctly. I mean, just look at the Speed Champion sets. I mean, that's like a test you'd give to last grade mathematicians trying to solve world hunger. Let me show it to you, okay? I have this tool here, which is usually used for aircraft modeling, you know, but I use this tool for applying stickers, though many other LEGO fans use just the brick separator which works as well though it's a little big so the hardest part is actually removing the sticker from the brick separator and again I know I'm out to be stupid and putting stickers and I know you guys are already commenting that I'm doing everything wrong and I appreciate that you guys care about that but before I continue please click that subscribe button right now guys another thing that annoys lego fans is of course when lego movie sets are inaccurate to the actual movies one of the biggest examples of that is lego marvel as you can see there is a fundamental problem I mean how do you do a lego set based on a movie without spoiling the movie, I mean it's like that in Spider-Man Far From Home, how do you do sets from the best scenes from the movie without spoiling the movie? But even with that there are some very weird sets like Iron Man vs Ultron, the Ultrons never combine to form a flying vehicle and this silly Mandarin vehicle that makes no sense. Also there is the Lego Star Wars for instance, in this Mandalorian set there is the Dark Saber and it looks nothing like the show though. I don't care for that. And Lego Mario also has some super weird stuff, like in this Super Mario 64 set, which was an old game, we have this question mark cube. But this cube never existed in the game, it was like an expression mark. And the question mark cube came in other games from Mario. And other miscellaneous stuff, like Boba Fett that we got in these new sets with this weird color, the remaining of Boba Fett's ship to the new name, also the cockpit is kind of small, how Thanos went from being a big figure to a mini figure, and his swords looks like a butter knife, and there there is this so funny Thanos, I mean, wow. And we know that time when Thanos went to jail, no? 
no. There are a lot of LEGO Marvel vehicles that are just pointless. I mean, many other LEGO sets have pointless vehicles as well, like every LEGO Jurassic World set. I did a whole video on how LEGO Minecraft is wrong and some say that the theme is legal. You should check that out. Another thing that annoys LEGO fans are big ugly pieces. You have probably heard of the big ugly rock piece. The other big ugly rock piece is Connor big ugly rock piece. The big ugly boat piece. This other big ugly boat piece. This other big ugly boat piece. And this smaller big ugly boat piece. My least favorite is the big ugly wind piece because I would like to see more realistic Lego airplane set. I mean, if they left space for you to add some flaps, but like in this aircraft, there's no way to stop it because there's also no reverse thrust, except like in the new sense, kind of. And there's also no speed brake, so <laughs> you're doomed. Other big ugly pieces are like the vertical stabilizer, the other vertical stabilizers, the various cockpit pieces, and many 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 others. Fans complain that these pieces make the sets more expensive and adding no value to the set overall, but I don't care. And there was also the new road piece that has been the cause of many controversy and overpricing, specifically on new LEGO City sets. And that is one thing that annoys me, is how the new system is not compatible with the old base plates, at least for modulars. One trick that people use is to put a base plate beneath the base plate of the module, but again, that leaves the building kind of wumbling and at the risk of you slamming your hand and the building just collapsing, as if there has been an earthquake or something like that. You have to dismantle the set and basically do a new system which is very expensive. I maybe do one like in 20 years down the line when I want to build a church for my Lego city but who knows. Why can't we just have a better cohesion between sets and modular buildings? I don't know. And one thing that annoys Lego fans is to have to find a very specific Lego piece in a huge bin of endless Lego pieces. I have this problem many, many times and you can't imagine the pain. There's also you miss one specific piece, so you have to end up doing some budget cut by do using other pieces that have basically the same function. And another thing that annoys me is when you have things that are not Lego in these boxes, though that's completely my fault, like Playmobil and some fake Lego. And the last thing that annoys most Lego fans is this box here. Now, you might ask in the comments, hey, what's wrong with this ad? And now, smart one, now. If you look at the map, specifically Europe, first off, a mark is wrong, it's kind of connected to Sweden. And then, if you look behind this wheel, yeah, Iberia is gone, it just disappeared. Tiago Catarino must be very upset. Now, if you want to see how to make money with LEGO, click the video on the screen right now. See you there.